Guide polls are now public, and the chosen favourite for the next guy, just barely beating out Osiris, was, you guessed it, Scylla. If you're looking for a specific god guide, then check out the playlist on my channel, and if I haven't covered your favourite yet, then go suggest it on the community polls over on the channel page. Like, share, subscribe, discord link is down below, and let's get right into this guide. So as always, we'll be covering Scylla in four sections to break up the guide and give it some structure. Firstly, her basic playstyle, what she's all about and why you should play her. Then all her abilities in depth, what they do and the best ways to use them. After that we'll have items and builds where I'll give my thoughts on Scylla's item choices and a build example. And finally we'll wrap this one up with some tips and tricks to up your game on the tentacle monster herself. Alright so let's cover Scylla's basic overview first. So Scylla definitely scratches the mage itch for anyone looking for a traditional mage to play. She does insane burst damage in large AoEs and can definitely two shot people with the right build. However, as a trade-off, Scylla's early to mid game is comparatively weak to compensate for her insane mid to late game damage. So if you enjoy mages and enjoy those hyper carry style of gods that are very strong in the late game but have a weaker early game, then Scylla's probably the god for you. Alright, so now you've decided Scylla's a god you want to learn, let's cover all her abilities, what they do and how you can make the most out of them. So kicking it off with Scylla's passive, this one is fairly simple. Every time Scylla maxes out an ability, aka has 5 points into it, she gains an additional 25 magical power and that's permanent. So once you're level 20 and have all 4 abilities maxed out, you get 100 free power. Also on top of that, Scylla's abilities also gain an additional effect once they hit max rank, but we'll cover that later when we're covering the actual abilities. So this passive is one of the factors that makes Scylla a monster in the late game. Hitting with 100 more power than other mages really makes a difference. Especially with Scylla's very high power scaling on her abilities, and having those extra effects on her abilities is game changing. This passive is deceptively strong. But moving on to her actual abilities, starting with the one, Sikkim. This is a simple ranged projectile that she sends forward in a line. It stops at the first target hit and roots them for up to 1.5 seconds, doing pretty high damage. However, the rank 5 upgrade for this ability allows it to hit up to 3 people in an AoE once it hits a target. This upgrade is a huge part of what makes the ability so strong. It's nice to root one person to set up for the rest of your kit or for the rest of your team, but to root three people and then pummel all three with your two or ult is insanely strong. Moving on to her two though, Crush is a circular AoE damage ability. It's a deployable that you can throw and leave on the ground for up to 5 seconds and it will slow enemies in the area if they walk through it and will detonate after 5 seconds or you can reactivate the ability to detonate it instantly, which is what you'll be doing almost all the time to secure the damage. Usually not going to leave this up for the full 5 seconds and let it detonate on its own. At max rank this ability also slows for extra time once you detonate it and will shred 25% of enemies magical protections that are in the area. So that 25% reduction will also apply to the damage of the ability itself, essentially increasing the ability's stopping power once you get it to max rank. Also a quick thing to note is that Scylla's main combo, being throwing the one to root the target and confirm the damage from crush, is on a 10 second cooldown. Both abilities share the same cooldown time so you can reliably combo people over and over every 10 seconds or even less if you have CDR. Alright onto Scylla's 3, so this is basically a teleport to keep her safe. You can deploy a sentinel to a location which grants vision of the area and then reactivate the ability again to leap to the sentinel. This is classed as a leap so you will go through walls with this but you can also be pulled by the likes of a Wheelix or any other leap affecting abilities. And this ability also grants a small amount of passive mana regeneration as you rank it up. So this is really just used for mobility and to escape people chasing you. You can use it aggressively in certain situations, but if you're new to Scylla and or new to mages, I suggest saving this to get away since you will be a priority target for the enemy in late game team fights. At max rank this ability also gains a slightly increased range and also grants vision without needing line of sight. Alright so let's finally cover Scylla's monstrous ultimate, I'm a monster. So you basically reveal your true form, giving you persistent CC immunity and a large amount of movement speed. And during this time you can fire a single shot of the ultimate doing massive damage in a circular area. However, where this ult gets interesting is the fact that if you score a killing blow with that ultimate shot, you get extra time in the ultimate and also an additional shot. So you can effectively chain this together and kill an entire enemy team if the stars align. It's the reason Scylla is called the Queen of Pentacles. Oh and once you max this ability out at level 20, the movement speed bonus is doubled. So this ability is usually one that requires some setup. You can hit this raw and if you feel confident you can go for that, but if you have setup either from your own route or from your teammate's CC, it can guarantee a hit and maybe even a kill to get that reset. Also, it's an underrated factor, but the CC immunity on this ability is really strong since it's basically instant and very long lasting. So you can use this to dodge something like a home bats ultimate for example and then fire the shot at him or something like that. So definitely don't underestimate the power of the CC immunity and movement speed on this ability. Alright, so with abilities covered, let's move on to Scylla's items and builds. 
So Scylla really only sees legitimate play in mid lane right now. You could meme her into the jungle or ADC probably, but at a serious level she's really just a mid laner, so I'll be covering the build section for mid lane Scylla. So to start the game off you'll want Mage's Blessing for the early damage on wave clear, plus some extra mana regen, then you want to start Book of Thoth with tier 1 book, and after that you'll have 150 gold to spare which you can spend on 3 potions. Which ones you get is personal preference really for what you need, but I recommend 2 health on 1 mana since you already get some mana regen from the blessing. You could also try the tier 2 book start which is much riskier due to not getting the blessing but it does allow you to stack much earlier as well. I personally don't recommend it especially if you're new to Scylla but it's there as an option. So from there your first item needs to be boots for the early stats and movement speed. The boots choice is sort of up to you between shoes of focus and shoes of the magi. I personally prefer focus shoes for the extra mana and CDR plus they synergize with book of thought that we'll be building as a second item. But match eye shoes do offer more early damage through the penetration if that's what you like. So as I just mentioned, you'll want to finish that tier 1 book into Book of Thoth for your second item. This does take a while to get online due to it being a stacking item, but it's worth it as Scylla due to her insane power scaling. Her early game is already fairly weak, so just play carefully while you stack this up and you'll be a monster late game. So after that you have quite a few item choices that I think are great for Scylla. Her builds aren't that flexible, but there are definitely some items that you can swap in and out of the build for your preference, so here's my item pool that I usually pick from. Spear of Desolation should almost always be your third item. Since you get no penetration from boots, assuming you went Shoes of Focus or Book of Thoth, you may need some early penetration and this is the best choice for Scylla. As I mentioned, it's not quite as mandatory if you went for Magi Shoes because they do have early penetration on them, but even then I would still go Spear of Desolation third. However, if the enemy team has a lot of healing, you might want to swap out Spear of Desolation for Divine Ruin or just buy both. Having that 40% anti-heal from Divine Ruin can be crucial when fighting gods like Hell or Ra. Polynomicon is a great item for Scylla as well. Often you have time to squeeze in an auto attack in between your combos, especially in the 1 into 2 combo, and having Poly makes that auto attack you squeeze in hit for like 500, and can allow you to 2 shot squishies quite easily with that combo, whereas you might not have 1 shot them without Polynomicon. Often, if the enemy team has more than one tank, which will be quite typical in Conquest, you'll want Obsidian Shard. This is percentage penetration, so it's the best way to deal with tanks that have 200 plus protections. Flat Pen usually won't do too much against that, so you'll want Obsidian Shard. Rod of Tahuti can be nice as well for adding damage to your combos. It already comes with insanely high base power, but the passive giving you extra damage against targets with less than 50% health means you can often finish off people that are low really easily with just one ability. It's expensive though, so if you do go into this, I would suggest getting it late in the build as a 5th or 6th item, don't go into this like 3rd straight after your boots. Chronos Pendant is decent for Scylla. Having that CDR means you can combo people more often, but usually I find that being able to combo every 8 seconds or so with just boots and Spear of Desolation is enough, and you don't really need this as much. But if you really want to combo people every 6 seconds, or you want to have your ultimate up more often, then this can be a good choice. Soul Reaver can once again just add a little extra punch to all your abilities and combos, plus it has really high base power to start with and some mana for Book of Thoth. Ethereal Staff is sort of similar to Soul Reaver, except it's a bit less damage for some more health and survivability. I personally don't like it as much on Scylla, but it's there as an option. Book of the Dead is also really nice in a build that includes Book of Thoth. Since you have so much mana already, you may as well leverage it and buy Book of the Dead. The shield it gives can be life saving, but you do of course sacrifice some damage for going into items like this, so be aware of that. Speaking of defensive items, if you're really struggling to stay alive and or are getting CC'd a ton, you can try picking up Magi's Cloak somewhere in the build, for the health and that CC block every 90 seconds. But as I mentioned with Book of the Dead, you do sacrifice a lot of damage to get this, so I only really recommend it if you absolutely need it. Alright, so with my item choices covered, let's move on to a full example build for mid lane Scylla for those just looking to jump in. So start with Mage's Blessing, Tier 1 Book, 2 Health and 1 Mana Potion, grab Shoes of Focus, Go back and finish your book into Book of Thoth, then get Spear of Desolation, Polynomicon, Obsidian Shard, sell your Blessing for Book of the Dead, and if the game goes long enough you can sell your boots to buy the Elixir of Speed and Rod of Tahuti. Your relics for mid lane Scylla should be Beads first, and then either Blink or Aegis depending on your playstyle. Blink is very risky and aggressive and Aegis is more safe and defensive. If you're new to Scylla I recommend going Aegis in that second slot, but Blink can be really nice for slightly more experienced players. Alright, so with all that done, let's finish up this guide with a few tips and tricks to up your game on Scylla. So a quick one that everyone should definitely be doing on Scylla is point skipping. This basically means that you skip leveling an ability in order to level a different one with that point later on. So for example, when you hit level 8 on Scylla, you can only put that point into either your 1 or your 3, you can't put it into the 2 or the ultimate yet. So instead you leave it, 
hit level 9, at which point you have two ability points available, and you can put them into your two and your ultimate. So you put one straight into the two and one into the ultimate, which ensures you get the bonus effect from the two and also the 25 power from the passive as early as possible. If you didn't point skip, then you would get these bonuses at level 10 instead. Also, if you have vision and or setup, ulting over walls as Scylla can be a really great way to win a teamfight in the jungle. Since the enemy has very little time to see it coming and react, you might land a hit you otherwise wouldn't have done if you just walked up to the enemies and tried to ult them from the front. But that's all I've got for Scylla. Hopefully you can now take her onto the battleground and kick some ass. If you watched all the way to the end, then you probably enjoyed it, so why not subscribe for more guides and everything smite on the channel in the future. But other than that, have a great day, and I'll catch you guys in another video later on. Peace out, you nerds.